Next hot topic is the feline Khaleesi virus. This slide here, just general Khaleesi virus that you can see. Your mild upper respiratory signs, the ulcerations on the tongue like this kitty gets here that looks like they burnt their mouth, some sneezing, and then the lame kitten syndrome. I've seen it associated with vaccines. The two cases I've actually seen have been a week after the vaccine. One of them was in my own cat. So when it says it's rarely associated, I believe that. However, these kittens, they can get swollen joints. They don't want to get up and move to their food. They're, they're febrile. They can have like 105, 106 fever with Khaleesi. But this limping kitten syndrome is associated with just even just the regular Khaleesi virus. But the scary one that everybody is so worried about is this virulent strain. This is the one that can have up to a mortality rate of 50% if it gets into your cattery. And this is very, this is scary. However, the thing that's really, really important is this right here. The virulent strains that have been out there have all been a different strain of Khaleesi. They haven't isolated the same strain from any place that has had it. It's, the strain has been a mutation of the Khaleesi in that population of cats within that shelter or the area of the country that they're in. It hasn't been the same strain anywhere, which will bring us to the vaccine part of it in a little bit. But you can see with the virulent strain, it causes damage to the vessels. It causes a really profound inflammatory response. So you can have severe diarrhea. You can start to see blood from their nose. You can start to see blood from different orifices. They can start to have a lot of swelling. This kitten here actually has a virulent strain of Khaleesi. You can, it's hard to see with the light, but it has severe swelling of its neck and its ears because they get a vasculitis and, they become, and it's got some, some ocular discharge that you can't see very well here. But these guys get really, really, really sick. All you can do is supportive care and antibiotics to help prevent any secondary bacterial infections from coming in. But again, these guys, up to 50% of these guys are, are not going to make it. This is mostly kittens, though. You can see it in your adult cats, too. This is, this is a pretty, this one's not just a kitten disease. This, is, this one can get into everybody. And then the problem comes in, how do we know that this is definitely what it is? The biggest part about it is, based on the clinical signs, are they having, have you had some mild upper respiratory that maybe now has gotten even worse and we're starting to see swelling, high fevers, some of the kitties have diarrhea. Some of them are starting to have some blood from places. Because the tests that are available, they can't differentiate the normal everyday Khaleesi from this virulent strain Khaleesi. So it, they could test positive, positive for it. That just means they have Khaleesi virus. It doesn't necessarily mean they have this virulent strain. But if the cat, if it, you know, if the cat looks like that's what it has, then it most likely does. The good thing about this is it tends to come in very quickly, affect all of them very quickly, but then it burns itself out very quickly. So it shouldn't, can, if you do proper isolation procedures, it shouldn't remain in the cattery for a long time. You should be able to get rid of it and it shouldn't continue to be a problem over and over again. <coughs> what are some of the things that trigger it? Poor husbandry, not cleaning like you need to, having food dishes too, you know, having too many cats using the same food dishes if they're getting sick overcrowding too many this is a shelter situation where there's a lot of kitties in one place and stress going to shows getting pregnant getting bred moving from a different cattery to your cattery just coming back from a different cattery after she's been bred so there's a lot of things that can stress them that can trigger just a regular Khaleesi outbreak that then can mutate and turn into this nasty virulent strain of Khaleesi what are we going to do to control it? We have, just like hopefully you guys are already doing this, any cat that's showing any signs of respiratory disease should immediately be isolated. This disease is airborne, and you don't always know with leukemia. Is it leukemia? Is it Khaleesi? Is it herpes? So any signs of respiratory disease or even a fever, you need to get that cat in a room by itself. You need to immediately disinfect all of those dishes disinfect the entire area that the cat has been. This virus is very stable in the environment and is not easy to kill. I have a list of disinfectants that will work on Khaleesi virus. Unfortunately, it didn't print for you guys and it's at the very end. Uh, I will make sure that a copy gets 
to Glenn to get on the internet for you guys, but it may take a week or so for that to happen. But it's very stable and not easy to kill like leukemia is. This kitty here has some Khaleesi. His eyes are a little bit swollen and has some pretty nasty discharge from his eyes. The best disinfectants to use for Khaleesi, if bleach is too hard for your nose, Vercon is a disinfectant you can use, and trifectant is a good one. That's It's used in a lot of veterinary hospitals. Acceler accelerated hydrogen peroxides, they do work. They're not as good. There are some name brands for them. Again, it's on the disinfectant table that I'll have for you later. But again, bleach is going to be your cheapest and your most effective that you're going to be able to get for all of the viruses that I talk about today. But you still run into the whole, what about their long situation? In terms of the vaccine, because this is everybody, a lot of veterinary hospitals are going to the new virulent strain, multi-strain Khaleesi virus. The actual vaccine is based off of one virulent strain. And as I said before, the strains have been different in each area and it's subject to what that particular cattery has. So that virulent strain Khaleesi virus vaccine likely isn't going to protect your cattery. And the single strain Khaleesi viruses that are out there have only been shown to help about 75 to 87% of the strains available, which will help decrease the actual disease that they're getting but it's not going to eliminate it altogether. It's just going to help cut down on some of the signs. The other huge thing about the virulent strain Khaleesi is there's not a modified live of it. It's only killed. So we're getting that adjuvant again. So if they were able to come into your cattery, get the strain of Khaleesi that you're having affect your cats, take it, manufacture a vaccine, then that would be the vaccine you wanted to get. That's not going to happen. I do not use this in my cats. They're vaccinated with a modified live Khaleesi, single strain. I do not use the virulent strain Khaleesi in my cats for that purpose. In terms of vaccinating these guys, when are we going to vaccinate for Khaleesi? Starting them eight to nine weeks old, and then every three to four weeks until they're a year. It has, um, you can, this is one that you only need to do every three years. In terms of the intranasal vaccine, in some of the studies that they've done where they've compared efficacy of intranasal versus parenteral vaccine use and compared them against the three major viral pathogens, the intranasal vaccine was the only one that gave 100% antibody detection, meaning that the body was reacting to the vaccine to help give them protection. It was the only one that worked for 100% for Khaleesi. The parenteral injection took a little bit longer. It got up to about 90% of the cats started to have some protection to where they actually recognized the virus, made antibodies to help clear the virus from the body faster. So if you're having an outbreak of respiratory, this is probably the way you want to go, is using an intranasal vaccine in your kids to hopefully help prevent it from going through quite as fast. Questions about the Khaleesi virus? Yeah. Do you want to talk about ad adjuvanted because that, that only comes with that, but. Yeah, I do. If you go to, if you guys flip to the very back right before references, I have all the vaccine information in there. The thing about adjuvants is they can cause, it's what they use to make the killed virus stable in the vaccine. A lot of times they use aluminum. There's other things that can be used. What the adjuvants actually do is they can cause a very chronic inflammation in that area. And then that chronic inflammation is what then can, over time, even after years, because it can chronically be inflamed, even if you don't feel anything there, there can still be chronic inflammation under the skin in that area. And it can take years for a sarcoma to develop. So giving a killed vaccine, maybe even before you guys got the kitten, and you're like, I've never given anything else, that killed vaccine could take four to five years before you ever see a tumor from it. And the sarcoma task force that's one, of, that's one of the big things about the modified lives. One, modified live is going to give you protection faster, and it's going to get rid of that adjuvant. And that adjuvant can cause that chronic inflammatory reaction that you don't want in your cats. And that's why I keep hitting on modified live, modified live, stay away from killed. And it is in there at the very end, just so that we could touch on the vaccine part of it a little bit. And 
that's why you're not going to want to use those killed vaccines. And I think it's really important. Purebred cats are much more likely. They're very sensitive, and they're a lot more likely to have reactions to vaccines and overreact to things because their immune systems like to go haywire sometimes and have these crazy reactions. So I'd really recommend staying away from those killed vaccines. Did that answer? Was that? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the Khaleesi virus in general? Has anybody seen it? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the like the nasty Khaleesi or just regular Khaleesi? I think just regular. I had some living kittens a few years ago, and I just gave them supportive care, and they came out of yeah, it. Yeah, they tend to come so. out of just the regular Khaleesi. They tend to come out of over, yeah. oh, three to four days. They start to come around. They come, their <coughs> fevers can get up to 106. I mean, they can yeah. get some pretty nasty fevers with it, but they tend to recover pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is just a question. Yeah. I ended up having a kitten that came in my house. It only had a weepy eye and one eye. And the vet told me that could be Khaleesi, even though the kitten was vaccinated against yep. Khaleesi. And it could be, and it could have also been herpes virus. I don't know what it is. Did he really so, so he didn't know what it was exactly. No, and the thing, the upper respiratory viral bugs, herpes, chlamydia, chlamydia is more of a bacteria, but herpes, Khaleesi, they can cause a very mild, transient, just self-limiting, mild upper respiratory where they can get a little weepy eyes, a little sneezing, and hopefully what the vaccine does is helps it from going completely into pneumonia, very, very sick kitten, that they get over it faster. There's, yeah, so it's not, wasn't sick at all. I mean, and, and, it can, and it probably was just a very, either very mild herpes or very mild Khaleesi that just came in from the stress, but the vaccine was protecting it from getting those horrible <coughs> signs. And that's why that vaccine is so important, especially if you're showing, because that stress can cause an increase. And especially if they have herpes, which is very chronic. Most cats have herpes and during times of stress, they may get a little sneeze, a little weepy eye that within two or three days tends to go away. But it probably is either from herpes virus or Khaleesi virus. Khaleesi isn't horrible, isn't the horrible disease. It's the virulent strain of Khaleesi that's really bad. And if you don't vaccinate for Khaleesi, it can cause some major problems because it can go down into the lungs and cause pneumonia. And it can be pretty, I mean, just regular Khaleesi can be pretty severe if you're not vaccinating for it which most, I'm sure, everybody everybody is. <coughs> Any other questions? 